Pink Booktube, it's Thea, and I'm here with my 2020 Reading Rush TBR. So I am getting this up very late this year, um, but I finally finalized my TBR and I'm very happy with it. Um, if you don't know, the Reading Rush it used to be the Booktubeathon, but it is taking place between July 20th and the 27th this year, um, so just a few days away by the time I upload this. Um, there are uh, seven challenges. Um, I am doubling up for most of these because there is no way I will be able to complete seven books in seven days. Never have, probably never will. Um, and I am still working full time, so I still have to go to work and do 40 hours a week. So, um, don't know how much reading I'm going to get done, but I'm very excited to read these. I... I uh, do plan on vlogging for the reading rush. I don't know if I'm gonna do like daily vlogs or if I'm gonna do like one long week vlog. Um, I might do like Monday through Wednesday and then like Thursday through Sunday. Um, since I am working uh, every day except for the weekends, I won't have much content for you guys. So I don't know quite what I'm gonna do yet, but let me know if you prefer like a daily vlog or a week vlog. Um, but without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into what I'm reading. So the first book, uh, the first challenge is to read a book with a cover that matches the color of your birthstone. I am a December baby, so I have like three choices. Um, I went with the turquoise book, and so I'm gonna be picking up Anna K uh, by Jenny Lee. There's some like turquoise-ish blue in here. Um, I know this is kind of a modern YA contemporary retelling slash reimagining of Anna Karenina. Um, I have an audiobook for this as well, so I think it'll be something that I can get to. Um, and I've had it on my shelf for a few months. I picked it up from Book of the Month back in February, um, and I haven't read it yet, and um, I am looking for some more contemporary right now, so I am very excited to give this a read. Um, I, if you don't know, I will read the description for you. Meet Anna Kay. At 17, she is the top of Manhattan. At 17, she is at the top of Manhattan and Greenwich society, even as she prefers the company of her horses and dogs. She is the perfect, if perfectly boring, boyfriend, and she has always made her Korean American father proud, even if he can be a bit controlling. As her friends struggle with the pitfalls of teenage life, Anna has always Anna always seems to sail gracefully above it all. That is until the night she meets Alexa Count Voskroff. Von Scroff, a notorious playboy, Alexa is everything Anna is not. But he, as Alexa and Anna are pulled together, she has to decide how much of her life she is willing to let go to be with him. And when a shocking revelation threatens to shatter their relationship, she is forced to ask if she has ever known herself at all. Um, I've heard really good things. I've actually heard that there are some kind of twists in here that are very emotional. So I'm very excited to get to it for the reading rush. The second challenge is to read a book that starts with the word the. Um, I know for some people this was really hard. For me, it was not hard at all. I already knew what I was going to read the minute I saw this. And that is The Attic Tragedy by J. Ashley Smith. I actually got this um, in the mail from Meerkat Press uh, in exchange for a review. So I had to read it anyway. It's very short. It's like a 57 page novella. So it's the perfect thing for a readathon. Basically, basically this follows two people, Sylvie and George. Um, Sylvia, it's a serious Sylvie, never called them ghosts, but that's what they were. Um, not that ghosts ever saw them, her not that George ever saw them herself. The new girl Sylvie is like a creature from another time with her old fashioned leather satchel, her white cotton gloves, and her head in the clouds. George watches her drift around the edge of the school playing fields, guided by inaudible voices. When George stands up for Sylvie, beating back Tommy Payne and his, and his gang of thugs, it brings her close to the stranger, though not as close as George would have liked. In the attic of Sylvie's father antique shop, George's scars will sing and her longing will, and her longing will drive them both towards a tragedy as veiled as and inevitable as Sylvie's whispering ghost. Um, I'm very excited to give a read and it's very short, so it's definitely something I can read for a readathon. A challenge a three is to read a book that inspired a movie you've already seen. I pretty much knew for the most part what I wanted to read for this. I had a few options, um, but I wanted to see which one I'd be able to get a copy of. I did settle on one. It was very, actually very difficult to find a copy and I just picked it up today at Barnes and Noble and that is Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I saw the movie the year it came out. Absolutely loved it. It was one of my top movies of the year um, and I've never read the book. So I figured 
it was finally time to pick it up. I know it's a sci-fi classic. Um, it's also very short. It's less than 200 pages, so it is very doable for a readathon, and I'm very excited to give it a read and um, be able to kind of see how the movie and the book are similar and as well as they differ. So um, I am very excited to get to this. Uh, challenge four is to read the first book you touch. So you can interpret this however you like. For me, I'm gonna do this the first uh, day of the readathon in my day one reading blog. I have a graphic, a list of graphic novels I need to get to this month. So I'm kind of just gonna kind of, I'm just going to kind of um, lay them out like on the table or on my bed and just kind of pick one. Um, and that'll be the graphic novel that I read. I always like to choose a graphic novel during a readathon because it's always a short read. It helps you when you get out of a slump um, or if you feel like you need a break from a novel, picking up a graphic novel or a comic book is always a smart idea. So I'm gonna do that challenge day one. Uh, challenge five is to read a book completely outside your home. I know this challenge was a little controversial because we're in the middle of a pandemic and we're in quarantine and social distancing and people aren't really supposed to be going out of their house. I still have to go to work. Um, I still commute by bus. So most of my reading is really done um, outside of my house anyway. So I'm gonna double up and honestly read any of these um, depending on kind of what my reading for the week looks like. Um, but I'll pick up whatever one um, I need to pick up. For my read, uh, since I have an audio book for this, I might do that on my commute because I can go back and forth between the two, um, but we'll see. But I'm definitely uh, gonna end up reading one of these. Uh, challenge six is to read a book in a genre that you've always wanted to read more of. For me, I always say I wanna read more nonfiction and I never get around to it. Um, so I'm gonna pick up Three Women by Lisa Tato. Uh, this is a book of month choice from about a year ago that I haven't read. Um, I know it's nonfiction, it follows three different women. Um, it's a true story about the sex lives of three real American women based on nearly a decade of reporting. Um, I'm very excited to give it a read. I feel like it's gonna be very feminist and have a lot of social commentary. And I'm very excited to get to this read. I also do have an audiobook, so I can go back and forth between the two, but um, I am very excited to give this a read. It just is here. It thrills us and torments us. It controls our thoughts, destroys our lives, and it's all we live for. Yet we almost never speak of it. And it is buried, and as a buried force in our lives, desire remains largely unexplored until now. Over the past eight years, journalist Lisa Tato has driven across the country six times to embed herself with ordinary women from three different regions and backgrounds. The result, Three Women, is the deepest nonfiction portrait of desire ever written and one of the most anticipated books of the year. So it follows uh, Linda, who lives in suburban Indiana. She's a homemaker and a mother of two. Uh, we follow Maggie, who lives in North Dakota. She's a 17-year-old high school student who finds a confidant in her handsome married English teacher. And, uh, the, last woman, the last woman, her name is Sloan. She lives in an enclave in the Northeast. She's a gorgeous, successful, and refined restaurant owner who is happily married to a man who likes to watch her have sex with other men and women. Based on years of reporting and told with astonishing frankness and immediacy, Three Moon is a groundbreaking portrait of erotic longing in today's America, exposing the fragility, complexity, and inequality of female desire with unprecedented depth and emotional power. It is both a feat of journalism and a triumph of storytelling, brimming with nuance and empathy that introduces us to three unforgettable women and one remarkable writer whose experiences remind us that we are not alone. I feel like this is gonna be um, a good read. A lot of social commentary, um, very feminist, and I am excited to finally get to it. And the last challenge is to read a book that takes place on a different continent than where you live. I live in the States, so picking a book outside of where I live, pretty easy, but also kind of hard because a lot of books I own pretty much take place in the States. Um, but for this challenge, I'm picking a book that's been on my TBR for so long and it actually takes place in Africa and um, I have an audiobook of it. It's called Queenie. I don't remember the author, but I'll put it here and I honestly have no idea what this book is about. I just know everyone loves it and I have an audiobook of it and it's been on my TBR for like years and I'm finally going to get to it. So I'm very excited. So here is my TBR for the reading rush. Um, I will add whatever graphic novel I'm gonna end up reading as well. Um, are you guys participating in the reading rush? 
Uh, if you are reading, what is your favorite challenge and what is your least favorite challenge? Are you attempting seven books? Um, are you doubling up? What are you doubling up on? I love any thoughts and comments about these books. If you've read them, if you guys want to chat about anything, let's chat it up in the comments down below. Uh, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to get notified of when I post new videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're well. Stay safe. Happy reading. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.